In this video, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot fiber optics issue using a feature called DAM, that is Digital Optical Monitoring. So it is actually a fiber tester inside your optic transceiver. So if you look at this transceiver, there is an inbuilt optical monitoring system in this transceiver that is called DAM. So when a DAM feature is enabled, the system will monitor the temperature and signal power level for the optical transceiver. Console messages and syslog messages are sent when optical operation condition fell below or rise above the optical transceiver manufacturer's recommended threshold. So as I told you, these optics are used to connect uh, your switches between the buildings. Say, think about, I have three switches here. This is my radial. This is one of my access stack. This is another access. So think about these. This is one building. This is another building. This radial is in a different building. They are connected using these uh, fiber optics. And then when there's a problem in this fiber optic uh, module or anything, if you don't get any alert, you are going to gets a lot of connectivity issue. So think about in a campus environment, you have uh, hundreds or thousands of switches and thousands of fiber optic uh, modules, and then uh, they are in a different age and they are going to fail on you most of the time. So you need to have a monitoring system so you will get alert before they fail so you can uh, change them. So that's what I'm going to show you how to monitor them and how to, you know, uh, troubleshoot them. So if you look at here, uh, so you issue a command show in transceiver, that is going to spit out all the transceiver that has DAM enabled. So in this one, I have only two ports, 10 gig ports that have DAM enabled. So these, there are, these are the values you are going to get and you need to make sense of these values. So to make sense of this value, I'm going to go to my next command that is show in 207 transceiver detail. So uh, think about this port 101 in this one and this is 103. And think about I am going to ha I am having a problem here and I got an alert on this one, 101, instead of 207 here. So I'm going to go to my switch here, and this is my uh, radial, this is my axis, so this is my radial, and this is my axis, and I'm going to issue a command, show int gig 10101, and then you issue a command, this one, not status, I'm going to issue a command, transceiver and uh, the problem is uh, here these are very cheap module so DAM is not implemented in this cheap optic module so you need to get in a module that has DAM enabled otherwise you cannot monitor those fiber optic connection so this is the same thing I issued in this one I issued a command show in 207 uh, transceiver detail, and I'm going to get all these values. And you have to be able to make sense of these values to do the troubleshooting. So there are four different levels here. One is the high alarm threshold, high warning threshold, low warning, and low alarm. So alarm threshold, this is where you are going to get serious problem. And you have to act when you re, when you breach the threshold level. So your value is supposed to be in between this warning level. So if you look at the temperature, I am between this value, and this value is between this one, this value is in between this one, this value is in between this one. However, this value falls in here. So that means I started to get threshold alarm. So that's telling me your receive power, DBM, optical receive power, is low. 
it uh, passed the low warning threshold. So if you look at here, in this optics, there are two things here. So I'm going to show you there's one is a TX, one is RX. You see, see here, one is sending the data, one is receiving the data. And the same here, TX and RX. So I'm going to put it back here. So that's what I'm getting an alert here. So think about this one is receiving low power. So that means the signal is sending from here is low and at the end when it receives, it sees low receive power. So when you get this kind of message, you have to start troubleshooting on your remote device in here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to my command from again. And this is my access end. And this is my radial end. So I'm going to go to, so in here I don't have 207. I have only uh, one switch in my radial. So I'm going to issue a command. Uh, instead of 207, I'm going to troubleshoot 101 here and 103 here. So this is 1, 2, 3. And so I'm going to look at who is the neighbor port on your remote device. So for this to, to look at that detail, show CDP neighbor int gig 101. Uh, no, that's not the command. Show CDP neighbor and then that's gigabit 101. Okay, so if you see here, my CDP neighbor uh, for this one is 101 on this radial uh, switch is connected to this is my neighbor access 103. If you see here, that is actually a 3. The value is 103 because I was in the half more. That's why I'm getting like that. So I'm coming here. So what you have to do is you have to come here and then you just take this one. I have a new optic module. I just take this optic module out and I put this new one here. And then, so before that, I'm going to show you, actually, this is a switch stack. I have two port here. So it is a port channel. So when you troubleshoot this kind of issue, your entire port channel is not going to go down. So you're still going to have connectivity between this uh, access stack and your radial. So I'm going to show you in my radial. So this is a show either channel summary. And if you see here, I have only one port down, but my port channel 10 is still up. So I already changed this one, and I'm going to show you another feature here. What you have to do is, so you go, and then, so I this is the show CDP neighbor, and I shoot this command. I know what is my remote device connection is. And then show in status. So also what you have to do is, you have to issue a command in here, show, uh, no, it's an access switch because you are going to change that in access switch. Show ether channel summary and you have one port down, 103, show int status. And then what you have to do is, you have to go to, 103, that's my primary link. And look at what is the optics you have. It's a 1000 base SXSFP. So you need to have the same optic module to replace it. So I guess I'm going to take this out. I guess I have not replaced it. I'm going to put this new one, the same kind of optics. And then what I have to do is 
I'm going to come here. And this is uh, something I don't have. You, can, you need to use this one to clean your patch cable. So this is the patch cable. If you have a new patch cable, um, you can just uh, use a new patch cable. Uh, but always people, what people does is uh, they don't use a new patch cable. They just uh, take this one and uh, clean uh, using uh, this uh, fiber optic cleaning tool, the tip. They clean the, they clean the tip. That's where you have dust and then that causes the, the signal loss. So you clean this one and then you have to put that in again. And you see the connection is uh, coming back up. And it's, uh, yeah, now the connection is up. And I'm going to go to my access here. Show Ether channel summary. Now both ports are up. So when you have a port channel, you can troubleshoot this kind of issue easily without bringing down the connection uh, to your access uh, stack or your radial stack. So let me show you um, what happened when I did the troubleshooting. So I did exactly the same here. Uh, and then what I did is I just uh, came and changed this optics and look at the value again. And what happened is from 15, uh, from 16, it changed to 15 only, 15.6. Uh, but 15.6 minus 15.6 is still in this one. So it is not within this range. So that means what we have to do is, and then we have to go uh, think about, oh, this is the extra optics I have. It's a good optics. So I have to go here. And then you still, it's not going to bring down the entire portion because this is still up. So I go here and take this out and put my new optics. Make sure that you see the optics um, firmly. And then, and you have to do the cleaning also. And then you bring up the connection again. All right, now it is up. You see it's green now. And then after I do this one, what I got is, I got this value. If you see here, it's minus 0 0.9. That's within this range. So now I am good. So this is how you troubleshoot uh, optical transceiver issues uh, using this DAM feature built inside your fiber optics module. Also, one more thing I want to show you is, so you go to your favorite browser and type in uh, Cisco Digital Optical Monitoring, and you scroll here, and you go to Digital Optical Monitoring, and uh, that is here. Go to your Cisco site, and you click on that one, and you have a PDF here, and it gives you all the uh, configuration information, how to configure the DOM, and then uh, what are the commands you use, show interface transceiver, that's what I normally, uh, that's what I was using here, and show interface transceiver detail. And this is uh, it's going to give you all the ports that have DOM enabled. And um, in here, show interface transceiver supported uh, list, so it's going to show you uh, what transceivers are supported on this uh, switch platform. And then here, show interface transceiver threshold table is going to show you what are the minimum and maximum values uh, for all your optics uh, uh, type. And then you have show interface transceiver threshold violations, and it's going to show you what is the violation uh, limit. And uh, you have uh, different other commands you can use uh, to troubleshoot all these uh, transceiver problems. Hope this video is helpful for you. Uh, if you like this video, click the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, uh, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification. I will see you in another video. Thanks. Bye.